Hi there everyone, it's Jaakko here. I wanted to make a breakdown of this Unreal Engine 4 level piece in here, which I did recently for my own portfolio thing. And I just want to go through some of the techniques that I used and some of the sort of workflows that um, I found to be really useful. So uh, let's take a look. I seem to have a little bit of like some kind of a baking issue here with this uh, panel here because we can see this uh, line in here. I'm just probably gonna go there and fix that, but let's not mind about that. So what I've got in here is just a bunch of uh, walls and pipes and um, things like that. I'm a really big fan of uh, Alien movies, uh, the original Alien, not the Aliens. If you if you've seen that, you know that atmosphere and uh, the sort of like utilitarian uh, approach to be creating like sci-fi shapes and things that could be usable like uh, like for example these uh, containers here which actually uh, these could be some kind of like a, like you, you can see these things maybe in the ships like their life jackets or something like that and if this is a spaceship or something maybe they have some kind of oxygen masks in there or some kind of like containers they could be some kind of like a uh, liquid or uh, some kind of gas containers who knows uh, something like that and they have these pipes and and you can see some of the exposed uh, pipe works under the floor here just having this big low floor piece which I just take off and and put some pipes and these kind of LEDs in there and you can see there's also like some of the uh, these these panels here have just come off and you can see those pipes and and then I have this floor uh, door in here which um, I created it to, to look uh, something to, to create some kind of visual interest in here and yeah it's nothing really special um, it's pretty uh, pretty simple like this kind of like a, a cloth type of things in here which I could probably do a better job with sculpting so this is just basically a, a normal map which I sculpted in ZBrush and just put it in there and and so is these uh, pipes in here and I'm gonna show you that later that uh, one of the tricks that I learned recently that how we can use uh, reuse the textures like that for for pipes and things like that so so basically uh, what I wanted to do here is that um, I wanted to to make this so that it's as efficient as possible so um, so I wanted to test this uh, Medpoly workflow and what what that is is that you can see that we have pretty nice like shading we don't have any hard edges in here but still this is relatively low poly so if I'm gonna jump into the editor and maybe we can put the collision on so we can see the the sort of the wireframe because the collision is actually the same as the mesh so the, it's just coming directly from the mesh so I'm just gonna go, go and click this collision here so you can see that for example these uh, uh, well for example these are pretty simple we, we don't have like too too much uh, we just have like some of the bevels in here and what this is is that uh, it's just basically a uh, normal geometry with custom mesh normals and uh, I've done that in using Blender and using the data transfer uh, modifier so I was able to get uh, custom mesh normals in there and I've used this all over the place like for example these these pieces these um, these guys over here so if I'm going to double click uh, maybe um, we can get to the editors I'm going to click that and maybe um, uh, go to here so we can see that mesh what I'm using so um oh it's like there's this floor how do you disable the floor um um yeah well we can go out like that so you can see that it's pretty nice we have like pretty nice shading it looks almost like it's baked but the thing for i for this kind of thing is that if i'm going to go and bake all the pieces and all the parts it's going to take a lot of time and it's also going to be very heavy because if you have baked objects like that then it means that basically each of these objects are going to have their own unique textures and that's not very efficient if you think about like creating environments you're going to have tons and tons and tons of uh, baked normal maps, baked bake textures and that's not very efficient so so what I've done here is basically used uh, medium poly, uh, met poly uh, modeling and custom mesh normals and use as as least uh, possible baking as possible so i just uh, didn't almost bake at all only things that i baked was i think only this this uh, uh console thing in here this terminal thing in here so i'm just gonna go and uh, disable the collision and so I'm, you can see that this this guy so this is actually i just baked in the x -Momo. i uh, created high poly and low poly and baked the normal so so i was able to get some of the nice curvature in there and nice kind of a shading so maybe from this angle, if you look at it, for some reason we, have, we are getting these, and I think that's probably because I didn't optimize light maps, probably. So 
if you are importing models to Unreal Engine and you want to get uh, uh, bake lights working properly, you should get uh, you should make the light light map UVs and you should make the light light map UVs so that they are non-overlapping and they are also as continuous as possible. So what that means, unfortunately, is that you probably need to create specific uh, light map UVs which are separate from the texture UVs. So uh, I think that is probably the reason why I'm getting this hard uh, lighting effect in here. But uh, never mind about that. So um, yeah, so also for these doors, uh, this is all um, uh, basically just uh, custom mesh normals. So uh, it's, I created only one object and I used the data transfer node to, to create the custom normal. So it was very fast uh, process. I didn't do any baking. So uh, then I just uh, take that textured uh, model and take it to the painter, substance painter, and then just created the, the normal map details in there and those uh, little things. So I also then created another texture, this dirty looking wall. And then what I did was I used vertex painting to to put the dirt on some of these. So again, I'm just having two textures um, for, for these walls and for pretty much everything. Also, these are the same texture actually. So anyway, if you're creating an environment which should be look like this one piece that is coherent, uh, then uh, anyway, you're gonna be end up using the same values for the colors and things like that. So so I think it's very good to, to use this workflow for environment pieces. So if you look at the tubes, for example, then uh, you can see that all of these are also using the same material, just one material for all of these tubes. And then how there is this variation, you can see that there's some, some kind of a variation for these uh, uh, ribbings. Uh, you can see that, well, that's just basically UV. So the UVs are just scaled differently. So you're going to be able to get some variation in those. And also there's this color, which uh, I, I'm not quite sure how I did that. I think uh, I probably just did another texture for that. But but you could also do this easily in using Unreal Engine's snow editors. You could just put another va variation for the color and then use the same textures anyway. So. So it's really uh, important if you're doing game assets or things like that, it's really important to keep the mind that you should save the texture memory as much as possible and and then you use decals and everything. So if you look at this uh, scene and I'm just gonna go uh, show and uh, we can go in here and use the sprites. So uh, where are those sprites? So the sprites means the decals and things like that. So. I'm just going to show also, you can see there's tons of decals in here, there's everything is pretty much like a, uh, you can see the dirt and things like the dirt is actually coming from this side anyway, so so you can see those, those are actually decals, so if I move that, you can actually see it kind of moving like that, you can uh, easily adjust the, the sort of like how how much there is uh, dirt and things like this, it's really nice and you have total control on this. Uh, when you're just building up the scene here in Unreal Engine. So then about the geometry, if you look at the geometry, these are all modular pieces. So what I've done is that I've just created like three different walls. So this is one of the wall and then this is another type of a wall piece. And then I also have uh, this, uh, this guy here. So this is just another and this is modular asset which was built the grid and it's just uh, if you go here you can use the grid snapping and if I'm, I'm moving this I'm going to be able to move it so that it just snaps perfectly the grid and it's really easy to align the pieces here perfectly so if you're just creating modular kind of environment then uh, just use a grid in your modeling application you're going to be able to to match that grid here in Unreal Engine so it just worked really nice and I was able to get these these shapes going and then also for the floor, I've had like one of the floor pieces in here. And then what this guy is, is just, um, I just use this one uh, texture and I just use, I'm just you know, sampling one of the, uh, one fourth of this uh, texture. So this is like one of the texture piece in here and then it's seamless. So you can't see any seams in here. And and then um, uh, just, this is just one, one of the squares from from this if you know what I mean and that's just put some depth to that so I have like a uh, put some uh, yeah some thickness to it and then this edge part actually is sampling that uh, edge of that same texture so um, yeah it's really easy to make and doesn't doesn't actually really uh, tax us so much so um, for example the floor pieces and then the walls and the ceiling and Pretty much everything is just basically a substance, so I'm just uh, went to substance 
uh, designer and created these uh, shapes and these uh, textures in there and then just using them. And then you can see this kind of a rubber effect in these uh, covered tubes in here and this is a trick that I learned from Arimus, this 3D Max master, this absolute brilliant game modeler and I'm just his absolutely big fan. I'm gonna link to his uh, channel in the description so check check this guy out. So he um, did a really nice series of uh, video tutorials on how to do metapoly modeling and one of his videos was about how to reuse textures and I'm gonna show you guys this. So so what this is is just um, it's just a very simple model. So I'm having this uh, geometry and I'm not having the, the bottom pieces because you never nobody's gonna see them and that's gonna waste uh, resources. So um, just basic model in here. And then what I've done is that I created this simple normal map texture in ZBrush and I just quickly <laughs> just sculpted this and, and baked this out. And then what this is is just I've uh, put this material in here so so what this piece is here is that I've just defined three different materials and and one of the material is these tubes and then one of this is steel part in here then I have this rubber uh, cloth type in here and and when you're creating a multi-material uh, objects and you want to use them in Unreal Engine just um, create the model in a blender basically and uh, then assign different materials to them and when you export that the FBX is going to have those material slots ready to be assigned in Unreal Engine so it's a very nice way to create these multi-material um, objects anyway so uh, what this is is just uh, I'm just doing this I'm just stretching this out and and you can see this if we move this you can see how that normal map is it's just uh, scaling up and it's tiling so it's tiling on this way so you can scale this pretty freely I'm just gonna go maybe uh, scale it on like uh, maybe I could scale it on the Y so you can uh, get different sort of effects and then this uh, piece of this so small normal map is something that you can reuse in uh, another asset so if I'm creating another type of uh, models where I need this kind of a rubber effect then I'm gonna be able to use the same thing for that so by just by creating like a uh, uh, different shapes and assigning the UVs and then scaling the UVs you're going to be able to uh, reuse assets so it's again really uh, efficient way so again same thing for these uh, corrugated tubes in here so I'm going to go in here and maybe um, select those and uh, there's like another texture that's not um, maybe I'm going to be able to get so we have this ripped hose uh, so the ripped hose is just basically normal map looks like that and and then uh, if I'm going to scale this, we can see that we're going to be able to scale those uh, those reaps uh, there. So yeah, uh, it's a, this, this kind of a technique and, and this works really well for for assets that are not modular and assets that you want to uh, reuse. So yeah. So then I have these small elements in there and they are just simple models which uh, I've created. And then I put some small, uh, I think 512, uh, resolution uh, textures in there so they're not too much taxing all the texture memory anyway and you can see that also these uh, these guys in here are, are the same these small boxes uh, some kind of like switches or uh, regulators or I don't know what this could be but yes uh, those are again just a small uh, unique texture in there so you can use when you're doing uh, environment scenes using the metapoly modeling you can still use uh, unique assets also, also these the textures here are unique but then the Nakajima logo is just a uh, decal that I used so so one of the thing about metapoly modeling is that it works really well for the engines that have advanced lighting like Unreal Engine 4 so so you can see that even though uh, we are reusing a lot of the same textures, it's not that obvious and lighting will give us shadows and variation to the scene. So, so this technique may not work so well for uh, some engines which don't have uh, advanced lighting. So it's just something to keep in mind that lighting will really affect the scene just absolutely so much. So also what I did was I just uh, put some uh, atmosphere and some fog in there and this is actually one of the uh, generate. I think the particle generator, which came with uh, Unreal Engine, so it's just drop in in there to give like a little bit like uh, effect, and it's just the uh, atmosphere does uh, absolute uh, wonders to the scenes. So if you're building uh, Unreal Engine uh, four scenes, uh, absolutely bear in mind that that you can always use. Uh, you probably should always use some kind of atmospheric effects to to create the 
the thing. So, so then what these, uh, you can see that these puddles of like, uh, you can see that something has maybe dropped from there, so some kind of oil or something. And then what this is also, it's uh, just a decal. So I'm just jumping here and and put the decals on. So what this is, is, is a decal again. And just this decal has its material in here. So we have decal material, this dirt. And then what I've done here, just uh, put this roughness, uh, insert roughness value in here, and insert like low value in there. So it's very uh, shiny so it looks like it's uh, some kind of liquid and then we can also move this so uh, maybe I'm just gonna uh, disable the grid so we can move this guy around like that so um, I think it's yeah it's very uh, flexible workflow and it gives us a lot of freedom to to do and we can also scale this so if we want to like create another puddle I'm just gonna duplicate this uh, so I'm just gonna copy this around and maybe move move it here and also we can use the scale so I'm just gonna scale it down a little bit so yes very quick way to add uh, interest and and what's also very nice about these decals by the way is if we move this around we can um, make this across the material so if we would do this on let's say that we want to put this kind of a uh, dirt on or on material and then we want to make these across different textures decals do that so we're gonna be able to to have this uh, piece in here now if we move in here you can see that this is going across so it's it's just like um, across the material so yeah if you would try to match these by hand it's just very uh, troublesome so our uh, decals are really wonderful to to do this sort of effects and things like that so yes well, uh, I don't know, um, is there much more to say? Uh, it's a very fun, it was a very fun project to do and I was surprised how quickly I was able to come up with uh, something that looks decent. So so definitely uh, if you are uh, interested to make some Unreal Engine scenes, uh, Metapoly modeling might be something to look. So instead of just going uh, hand one by one and and baking everything by hand it might be worth to take a look and I'm gonna make another video about exactly how we can come up with this nice kind of shading that that you can see in here like for example in the doors you can see that it's just I love this this uh, kind of a soft look so if you played uh, Alien Isolation I recommend you do by the way it's a brilliant uh, brilliant masterpiece when it comes to environment design so so they just went to town with this uh, Met poly modeling style, so they used custom mesh normals and decals for for most of the elements, and they just uh, reused those textures. So, so yes, uh, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you get something useful out of this. And I got the request recently how to do these corrugated pipes, and I'm gonna also do do another video tutorial on that. So, um, hope to see you guys soon. Um, this was Jakko. Uh, bye bye.